<laughs> How y'all doing? Man, the uh, Lord spoke to me while we were sitting there and worshiped a minute ago. And uh, I always wonder if Jason actually always gets these little moments with the Lord during worship and he just had one for me. He said, you know, it's kind of crazy. About, babe, what's it been? Four years ago we started coming to church here. About four years, 2020. And uh, it, was, it was just so, so wild. I kind of had a little bit of a revelation thinking back. Uh, I went from, I had this kind of an awkward conversation, which it turned out to be humorous, uh, with Shane. Where'd he go? Is he still in here? Uh, one day I said, you know what's crazy? I said is, you know, when, when my wife and I first started coming here, which we were just dating at the time, I didn't like the music. <laughs> I, 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 I would ruin it for my wife. I, I'd sit there and ridicule and nitpick and all this, but that was just the evil one working on me. And uh, now it's one of my favorite parts. We, we get mad if we can't get here late before worship starts or after worship starts. Um, but anyway, uh, watering my distractions. Uh, I actually took this just today. Oh, uh, and I was out there fixing me, putting out some water and working the ground for the arena. Um, the title uh, is really just what was in my head. Um, I had no clue, honestly, what I was going to be talking about. I kind of felt like Pastor Dwayne, where you, a couple weeks ago, you know, he had a message that said, come and see. And I thought, man, kind of feeling like you. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I, what I was going to say. So I, I kind of took a, a page out of his book and... and uh, uh, the reason why I went with, with watering my uh, distractions was at one point today, I was in there uh, eating lunch. I'd gone to the admin building for something, and uh, I was sitting there, and I was talking with Tina Harrison, and uh, I was telling her, I said, you know, I said, I've, I just feel really distracted. Um, I've had a lot of junk going on. Um, I kept trying to go to the Lord over the last several weeks about this message, and just it seemed like there was something constantly pulling me away. And it's really frustrating, uh, especially when, you know, you're really trying to hear the Lord. And uh, but it was anywhere from, you know, side jobs that needed finish, uh, problems amongst our team, financial decisions my wife and I are trying to make. Uh, issue, we had issues with our tractor. Uh, just got it back, and there was something still not done with it. And just something constantly, all the way up to today, kept pulling me away. And then I get a call from... Uh, the city of Savoy, that's where we live, and our wonderful dogs, for the 4,000th time, have managed to escape the backyard, and they are terrorizing the, the city of Savoy workers. Uh, the quote-unquote, we're aggressively coming after them. And they're like, oh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, and on top of this, uh, we have, over the last few days, developed a mice problem in our house. Uh, don't know where they come from, why suddenly they're in the house, but we've got them all over the place. Um, I've probably got, what do you think, babe, 10 to 12 mouse traps <laughs> set all throughout the house. Uh, today, as I was heading over uh, back to the floor to go handle the dog situation, uh, Courtney and uh, Elena, Elena had a doctor's appointment today, and they were... Uh, the timing worked out right where she wasn't going to be too far behind me. That way she could watch the boy uh, while I worked on the fence. Well, while I was waiting on her, I decided to set all these, these mouse traps. I had them strategic, you know. I'd been from where I'd seen them to where they were leaving their little pellets, Luke, and uh, where, I, where I thought they, they might travel and all this stuff. And uh, I, uh, did, I had a hilarious thought come into my mind as I saw my wife pull up in the driveway. So I run back to the bedroom. And I grab uh, my AR. Well, it's a 22. It looks like an AR. And I go to the front door, and I got draped across me like this, right? And I swing that sucker open, and I look at the girls and said, "Regiment, come inside headquarters so I can show you where all the traps are." <laughs> and she just looks at me and goes, "Regiment, huh?" And Elena looks at me and goes, "Why do you have a gun?" <laughs> oh man, they get to put up with stuff like that for me at the house. Uh, but anyways. Uh, 
all, all the while trying to just trying to get back to the arena. You know, I had all this stuff to try to have to deal with, and I'm just trying to get back to the arena so I can spend time with God. That's where I get a lot of my quiet time. It's kind of it's really peaceful, and whether I'm on the tractor or if I'm watering the ground or whatever I'm doing out there, that's where I get a lot of my quiet time, especially when I'm prepping for a message. And uh, uh, little did I know, He was already putting me through it uh, symbolically. Um, the distractions uh, I had, and all, when all those mouse traps and everything, he was speaking through them. He was speaking through the mouse traps. And I thought, well, you, if you can speak through the mouse traps, what's next? The, the diaper wipe, baby wipes. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, we, you know, it, it, the more I thought about it, you know, as I was sitting there uh, going through all this, and he really started pointing all this out to me. Uh, you know, there's every day uh, life is filled with distractions and traps. Um, whether it's relationship problems, uh, financial stress, pride, temptations, bad habits, kids, family. Um, it's how we choose to navigate the waters that makes or break us. Me, I'm constantly battling my flesh and my pride. Um, Brother Dwayne, he's giving me lots of advice. Uh, I don't know how many times. I mean, we had some stuff going on just, just this week. And uh, I'm not going to go into it all, but he, he told me, he said, well, you were right and you were wrong. <laughs> he said, make a lot of sense? I said, not at all. <laughs> but uh, it turned, you know, really it was just, it was, it was my pride. It was, it was my ego. And keeping that in check is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Because uh, it's always getting in my way, whether it's with my wife, with my kids, with my coworkers, my team, whoever. Um, and I really have to keep myself in check on that because I, probably because I, I think it's because I, I love what I do here so much and there's a lot to be done. And when it comes to just stuff here, that is, and outside of here, it's a different story. But um, I get tied up in how I want it. Well, it's not really what I want. It's, it's, how, it's what the Lord wants. And I have to keep that in mind more than what Austin wants. And I, that's, that's one of the things, uh, the, other, the other morning I was sitting out there on the tractor before I ever got going and uh, I just started praying, and I said, Lord, and I said, please help me to do what you were wanting me to do. Allow me to never not see the true purpose of why I'm here, because I thank him for what I do here every, every day. Uh, my first day here, I walked straight into that arena, and I said, Lord, thank you. I, mean, it was, I was just talking to, to our, our team lead the other day. I said, you know, it's, it's crazy. I said, I've never in my life until the first day here uh, had the stress of getting up and going to work. Or excuse me, I had all the way up to the first day that kind of stress. Since then, not once ever. I love what I get to do here. I love working for the Lord, and I love being able to do it out in that arena uh, in that form of fashion. Um, but anyways, um, there's a lot of, um, oh, excuse me. There's a, so uh, I, actually there was something that came to mind while I was sitting there. Um, another distraction uh, can be a way, how we waste our time. That was something else that came up uh, in my mind. And this last month on September 14th, I made a note uh, on my phone. It was a prayer. And uh, I wrote, Father, I pray you forgive me for taking time for granted. And I ask you that you remind me not to do this. I pray you see my heart and not my flesh, and forgive me for when my flesh has overshadowed my heart. And I didn't even realize it when I did that, or if I did, I, I didn't remember doing this because of that. Uh, that was, it just happened to be uh, the anniversary of a death of my cousin in our family. Uh, she uh, passed in a bus accident 10 years ago. And the fact that it was prayer about not wasting time just kind of preached in itself. Um, we can waste time in a lot of different ways uh, at work, uh, at home our downtime, not using it wisely um, but if I'm being honest, I mean the biggest waste, uh, waste of time that I do is not uh, spending enough time with Jesus uh, whether it's in prayer, uh, in the word I don't know why that is, and that tears me up. And I, I, something I'm really working hard on is uh, spending more time with him in the Word. My wife, 
man. When she decided to latch on to Jesus, she had her Bible, her phone, and usually some sort of devotional thing right there in front of her. She was highlighting, she was looking stuff up, and I mean, just she would just get lost in it for hours. And I was like, Lord, help me to have that kind of kind of passionate about your word, because she that was to me that that was very encouraging. Um, there's a lot of years I wasted focus on stupid, selfish, and sinful things, um, pointless things. Uh, I've thought to myself before, I said, man, I said, if I, if I hadn't wasted so much time, where would I be in life now? Like, where, where, how much further along could I have been? But then I thought, well, we're not supposed to dwell. Uh, that's, you know, dwelling's a sin. So I thought, what am I doing to waste time now? What, what is it that I'm doing that I could be spending my time better uh, and growing spiritually, but not only for myself, but for my family. You know, I got another baby on the way, and we've got, you know, it's, it, it's, it's time to get, to get my mind right uh, for my family and our future. Um, sitting here thinking about it, sitting there thinking about all this today, I thought, man, our revelations when we have uh, of our sin is just astounding. You know, when, when all of a sudden, um, when that light, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote when that light bulb of conviction illuminates, <laughs> uh, it hurts a lot of times, you know, it, it, it seizes us up, and I said, but the beauty of conviction means that we taste that bitterness of sin uh, we've committed, and we learn, to, we quickly grow to hate it, because it tears us up, it makes us, it feels, we feel that remorse, we feel that anger, um, and so it helps divert, divert us to uh, a better path. Um, so I actually got, I got something that's pretty cool. Uh, I got a piece of a conversation uh, that I wrote down from a podcast that I, from weeks ago uh, that was just, man, it was so good. It was so good. I don't know what the podcast was. I don't know uh, even the names. Uh, there was a man and woman on there. And, uh, but I wrote it down knowing I was going to put it in a message one of these days, and I couldn't wait to read it, and it just happened to go, go with this today, so I'm going to read that to you. It says... If God showed us all of our sin at once, we would be crushed. In God's patience, he reveals the degrees of sin over time. That's why the closer you get to God, the more you see yourself. God knows that our vision of him plays a part in the ability to handle what he shows us about ourselves. That part right there, I love. I'm gonna read that again. God knows that our vision of him plays a part in the ability to handle what he shows us about ourselves. Man, every time I read that, it fires me up. If someone didn't believe and they were shown all of their sin, they might leave the faith. It would crush them. God, as he grows us and sanctifies us, he's able to show us more. He's like, okay, now, you can, okay, you can handle more because you, now you know what to do with it. Some of us don't know what to do with our sin, so, so we turn to shame. So God grows us so that he can tr we can trust him to handle it instead, of it instead of it destroying us. Man, I have probably read that at least 30 times since I wrote it down. And every single time I do, I get more and more and more out of it. Um, I know dang well if I, had to, if I had to sit there and think about it, if you had all of that revealed to you, all your... Anything that you've ever felt guilty about, shameful, your regrets, you know, your rights and wrongs, all that revealed right there at once, he said, and he just laid it all out. Oh, my goodness. I love the fact that they, that this right here, uh, they were, they were, the whole conversation was explaining, um, well, everything I just read, really. I don't have to keep going on that. Um, oh, sorry. The few, so I've got a few scriptures here. Um, when I'm doing a, um, what seems like a te more testimonial message, I like doing these at the end. Kind of helps tie things together a little bit. Uh, the first one is Matthew 6:24. It says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Colossians 3 I like I like to quote it. I think it was two through eight. Set your minds on things that are above, not on the things 
that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is your life, who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of the wrath is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, your anger, your wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Romans 12, 2. I love Romans. My wife and I, we've, we've read quite a bit together out of that. Get to it here. Sorry, I happened to be all high tech. I left my, went off and left my Bible. Ain't that something? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And my last set of scripture, we go on to James 4. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. I love that one. Draw near to God, and, you will draw, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You can't, you can't serve both, going back to Matthew. And all, all this, to me, ties into talking about the distractions and the traps. You know, don't, don't let yourself become on the fence, lukewarm, trying to serve, and try, trying to be Christ-like, but still wanting to hang on to all of your bad habits. And I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. That's something I've struggled with for a long time, and there's things I go through now. Um, but anyways, guys, that's my message. Usually mine are my short and sweet. I hadn't, I, I hadn't gotten to where I, I could sit here and go on like Brother Jason. He's, that's, a, that's a lot harder thing to do. But uh, if y'all all stand, we'll pray it out. Lord, I thank you so much for everyone here tonight. Lord, thank you so much for, for speaking through me. I pray. I'm always nervous up here, Lord, and it, it's, it's, it's a big weight. And Father, I, but I love the opportunity, and I just pray that my words have been able to pierce somebody's heart spiritually, Father. I ask that you please be with us all, keep us safe on the ride home, and we'll see you all tomorrow. It's in your holy name, amen. If you'd like to receive a priestly blessing, please hold out your hands. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Let the Lord lift, his hand, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Love y'all.